Are you dreaming of turning your homestead or your farm into a sustainable, thriving machine, but feel sometimes bogged down by the hows and whys of it all? Whether you're battling the elements, you're wrestling weeds, or just trying to make ends meet, you're not alone. We all go through this and deal with these issues. Today, we're diving into a treasure trove of free resources that you can use on your homestead or farm and that we've used here in our journey at Long Bottom Farm. These resources have really helped us and I think they can do the same for you. We're gonna talk about online resources, network and community forums, tools and technology that can help you on your farm and homestead, government and nonprofit resources, and then free resources of things such as podcasts. We're gonna go from grants that you can get for your farm or homestead to a podcast that will change your mindset and everything in between. We've got you covered here, so grab your notebook and let's get ready to get our learn on. All right, guys, let's jump right into this because we've got a lot to cover. So first, we're going to talk about some online resources, and the first of which is FACT, Food Animal Concern Trust. FACT is dedicated to improving the lives of animals and making sure that the food we eat is safe. They stand out for their commitment to humane animal treatment, open pasture access, and just overall well-being of the animals that we farm. One of the most important ways that FACT helps farmers is through direct grants. Every year, they actually give out grants to beginning farmers, and they typically look for farmers that are trying to become humane certified or that are looking for ways to improve the life of their animals. That's typically what they give their grants out for. So if you're a beginning farmer, homesteader, this is definitely a way that you may be able to get some grant money to help you get started on whatever project that is you're doing. That said, FACTS offerings don't just stop at grants. They have a ton of resources that can help you not only grow your farm through videos and blogs that they have on their website, but they also have some great handouts that you can actually display at your farm stand or if you're at a farmer's market. They give a bunch of facts about eggs, beef, pork, and these are free to print and will answer a lot of the questions that your customers are gonna have. Again, these are free. So definitely something you should look at taking advantage of. They do operate on donations. So obviously if you use some of the resources here and you find them helpful for your farm, definitely consider donating as it's a worthy cause and especially for something that can help you improve your farm or your homestead. Next, let's talk about ATRA, and that stands for Appropriate Technology Transfer for Rural Areas. Essentially what they do is they maintain a knowledge database of videos, podcasts, blog posts, that all talk about issues in farming, such as soil health, silvopasture, how to raise specific animals. They have a number of resources on the site. If you go under topics, you'll notice they have agroforestry, business and marketing, climate solutions, crops, equipment, soil. It's just a ton of resources that they have. And if you click any one of those, uh, for instance, farm energy, you'll get topics on agrosolar, bioenergy, renewable energy. And so it's just a plethora of information that can help you grow your farm, make smart decisions about your farm. And the best of all, again, this is free. They operate as well on donations. So again, if you find something valuable on here, you know, consider donating. These are essentially like courses. They have all the information from professionals or people in these fields. And if that information benefits you, consider giving back to them. In this world of farming, knowledge is powerful. Power. And with Atra, that power is at your fingertips. So definitely consider checking it out. Now let's move on to one you're probably very familiar with if you're watching this. It's YouTube. It is a gold mine of information, of how to, of what not to do. Of course, there's some entertainment in there too, but you can learn so much from some of the good channels. There's so much education to be found on there. And the best part is, again, it's free. And YouTube, I don't even encourage you to donate to because you can't. YouTube makes its money through the ads that you watch. And while they can be annoying sometimes, some of them you can skip, some of them you can't, they do allow you to obtain this information for essentially free other than a little bit of your time. So in my opinion, it's a good trade-off. So whether you're a seasoned farmer, you're a beginning homesteader, or anything in between, YouTube pretty much has everything you'll need. Again, everything's not going to exactly fit your context, but you'll take little bits of this, little bits of that, and work it into what you're doing. And it's helped me through a lot of problems we've encountered on our journey of starting a farm. YouTube is obviously very simple to use. You essentially go on and you hit the search bar and you look for whatever you want to find. Um, that's it. Uh, search, find. Sometimes you have to wade through some stuff, but... There's a lot of information, a lot of perspectives, and I'm sure you'll find what you're looking for through their search feature. When you're searching through YouTube, be sure to subscribe to the channels you love. 
at Longbottom Farm. That actually helps the creators who put out this information get more recognized by YouTube and it puts their videos out there, makes them easier to find. And it also helps to grow the channel. There's also a little thumbs up button you'll see at the bottom uh, for any video. So be sure to give that thumbs up a like if you like it. Because again, that helps farmers. That helps people that are putting out this material. It lets Google know that you're enjoying the content and then they put it out to more people, which helps the person that made it and helps them make more. So concerning farming, homesteading, and YouTube, there's a couple channels I really like. One is just a few acres. If any of you watch Pete and his material, I think he's got almost 600 videos on everything from cattle to building tractors to fields and soil health and managing inventory. There's just so much to be learned from there. I've learned a lot in our farming journey. So definitely a channel that I recommend. Another channel is Justin Rhodes. He does a ton of homesteading stuff, things you can do around your home. Uh, he's got documentaries of them traveling the country, meeting other homesteaders, just provides a lot of information. If you're into raising your own animals, growing your own food, uh, a ton to be gleaned from there. So check that out. Farm Builder. This is a great channel. Uh, this is run by Jordan and Laura Green. Um, they actually live about an hour from us here in Virginia. They have a ton of stuff specifically about raising pigs. Uh, Jordan and them do a lot of pigs. They've got a lot of systems in place from doing this over a number of years. A lot of the farms around here that I live actually buy their piglets from him. Just a great resource for uh, learning basically how to farm. Uh, there's marketing stuff in there. There's a lot of pig raising, cattle raising. So definitely check it out. Uh, definitely one of my favorite channels and kind of one of my go-to channels. If I'm having a problem with something, I'll go there to look and see if Jordan has addressed it. Sheraton Park Farms. Uh, this is another great channel, just about a small farm and how they are making it, how they make their money, how they raise their animals, the problems they encounter. And this is a great channel if you're starting a, a specifically a small farm. You know, you're going to do farmer's markets, you're going to sell online. They do a, a great job of bringing their experience and sharing that with you, good and bad, which is really one reason I like the channel. Uh, it's genuine, and I think you'll also find a lot on there that'll really help you in your homestead or your farm. And then Farm Marketing Solutions with John Siskovich. Uh, John's made a ton of videos, started out with pastured poultry, then he got into some pigs. And he essentially has a free online course through his YouTube channel. Um, you could pretty much learn everything you need to know about raising pasture poultry and raising pigs on pasture. He's very knowledgeable, does some great videos with actually good entertainment factor as well. Uh, really enjoy his videos and I've learned a ton. His videos were my initial go-to when we started pasture poultry. He's designed his own chicken tractor, which you can get plans for on his website. And just a ton of knowledge, uh, again, for free. Um, I highly recommend if you're going to do pigs or, ch or pastured poultry for meat that you check out his channel. And then last but not least, check out Longbottom Farm. You're already watching it, so that's good. Um, we're a small family farm and we're just putting out videos. Um, you're watching one now and we raise chickens for meat and eggs. We raise pigs, we raise cattle, and we sell at the farmer's market. We sell online and we're basically just trying to share with you how we do all that. So check them out. Or if you're watching this, you're already checking it out. So. Now let's move on from YouTube to one of my favorite resources out there, and that's ChatGPT. If any of you are unfamiliar with ChatGPT, it's essentially a search engine, but it talks back to you. So for instance, if you go on Google and you type, how do I farm pigs? You're gonna get a million things, and then you have to pick through the topics to see if one kind of suits what you're looking for. ChatGPT, on the other hand, is a search engine where I could type, how do I farm pigs? And ChatGPT is actually going to give you a full rundown of picking the breed, setting up an environment. It's going to essentially give you everything you sort of want to know. Now, it's going to be very broad, but, you know, for instance, choosing the right breed. Then you can double down. You know, I'll go ahead and stop this because it's going to just give me a ton of information. But I would put in how to choose the right pig breed. And it's going to now go more into depth on that topic. And this is great for, one, just if you have questions, it'll give you some basic answers. Two, if you're just looking for ideas, um, I use it all the time for my videos, you know, trying to come up with, you know, what do people want to see? What would be interesting to, say, a beginning farmer or a beginning homesteader? And it'll give me a, a ton of stuff. As you can look and see, it, it's still giving me stuff on breeds of pigs. And again, I can double down on these numbers if I want. You can ask it so many questions. You know, I live in Virginia. What kind of 
plants should I have for my garden? What grows the best? I'm having problems with my soil. This is what I'm having. What do you think it is? You can just ask it anything. Again, you have to know how to probe it a little bit, meaning ha know how to ask the right questions. So sometimes that takes a little time, but once you learn to, to ask it the right questions, like I say, it'll give you a ton of information and it's almost like having a personal assistant. It's somebody that, you know, an experienced farmer down the road. Uh, we've done a whole video on ChatGPT and how it can help grow your farm. You can see that up here. So if you want to get more into ChatGPT, check out that video. But otherwise, again, just go to uh, chat.openai.com. It's free to use. You have to set up an account, but other than that, it's free. It doesn't cost anything. They have a paid version as well that has some extra bells and whistles, but you can get totally by with the free version. And it's something that every farm, homestead, pretty much anybody should be using. Kind of one of the biggest things since the internet and in that this is just really specific. It'll save you time in searching for things and just be like another farmer you can talk to. So check it out. So those were some of the online resources. Now we're going to move to another section, which these are still online resources, but in a little bit different way. And this is more networking and communities. A lot of these are online. Farming and homesteading is not just about the farming. It's about the connections that we make. In this digital age, there's connections that can be made online through groups like Facebook groups. There are groups on Reddit specifically made for farming or homesteading. There's Discord, which I haven't used Discord a lot, but uh, that's still a, a great community for finding like-minded individuals, uh, say farming or organic gardening, and joining those groups. And they can become, again, a, a source of information, a place to bounce questions off of, and just a place where people can share experiences. Now, when we talk about Facebook, again, you have to have a Facebook account. Um, and a lot of people hate Facebook these days, and I don't blame them. You know, you have to worry about your information being out there you know a lot of people don't want their information out there my take on that is that and i don't know if it's like you but i've gotten probably 20 letters in the last two years saying oh we're sorry we had a data breach and now your information could possibly be out there social security yada yada as frustrating as that is it's a fact that if you're going to do anything online it's there even if you're not doing anything online you know the the credit places actually got hacked and they don't give your permission to take stuff. They just have all your information. It's where banks turn to and places when they want to give you loans and they want to know everything about you. Those places have been hacked. So I kind of look at it with Facebook now is that rather than delete my account, I try to keep what I want off of it, but I just find how if they're going to take my information, I'm going to figure out how to use them to work for me. And Facebook groups is a great way to do that. There are groups on there, you know, like uh, Farm Builder Entrepreneurs. What I talked about Jordan Green a little bit ago in the YouTube section, Farm Builder. This is their Facebook group. It's 27,000 members. These are all farmers, homesteaders, and basically you can almost use search feature here as like a dictionary for farming. If you get questions about fencing, uh, waters, raising animals, feeding animals, growing gardens, there's just, there's so much on here. And this is all from farmers who are doing this, have encountered these problems, and have solved these problems. So Facebook groups is a great resource to use. Again, if you hate Facebook, I'm with you. I'm not a fan of it. I wouldn't have it if it wasn't for our business. But again, that's another use for it, is I use it for our business to hopefully get traffic and get people to our website. But again, it's a great for the groups, Facebook groups. So just go into the group section, look around, and like I say, Farm Builder, that's one I would apply to right off the bat. You know, there's just a stats, uh, stuff about animals, um, fencing. It's just a pallets. It's just a great, great resource to use. So consider checking that out. The next one we talked about Facebook was Reddit. Probably a lot of you are familiar with Reddit. And it's basically just uh, forums. You know, each forum has different topics. There's farming, there's organic farming, there's gardening. And so you can use these groups. Again, it has a search feature that you can type. You know, if I was... Uh, homesteading and you'll get a bunch of responses best state for homesteading realities of homesteading has homesteading saved you money and these are all if you look up top it'll say our homesteading or our homestead these are groups so if i want i can view this community it has 2.8 million members go to this community and then if i like it i can join the community and 
then you just get notifications from that community. So it's a great place to uh, just bounce questions off of, to see other people's experiences and, and to learn a lot. So definitely something you should check out. So that's some of the networking and community forums. Again, another way to network is to, this is on offline, but it's a free resource, is just go to a sale barn to an auction. Uh, you'll meet farmers, you'll talk to them, uh, go to your local farmer's market, talk to some of your farmers there. There's a lot of places just in your community that you can go and meet people that are doing what you want to do Go hang out with those people. Go there, ask them questions. I know we as farmers, we're nowhere near what I'd call experience, but at the same time, I love it when we get questions about things because then I can share some of my knowledge and I feel like I'm helping someone do what I'm doing that, that wants to do that and I'm in a position that I can offer you know, an advice about something. So just looking around in your community at places where the people that are doing things you want to do, where do they congregate? Where do they hang out? And just try to meet some of them. Another free resource right down the road from you. Now let's move on to tools and technology. Again, the stuff we've already talked about, you know, the internet, different things kind of already apply to that, but there are some other tools and apps and different things that you can use that are also free and can help you on your farm or homestead to make good decisions about what you're doing or just to just be in the know. One of the first ones is just having a good weather app on your phone. This will make a big difference and trust me, whether you're gardening, raising animals, if you plan stuff or don't plan stuff around the weather, it can come back to bite you. So it's definitely something you just want to keep keep aware of, you know, what's going on, what you can expect. That'll help you with planting crops. That'll help you know when to cover certain crops, livestock, if you're breeding. You know, we're watching right now because it's March and we've had these re really warm temperatures in Virginia. Typically, I don't put the cattle back on our bottom land until around the second week of April, you know, when the grass is growing really good and watching the weather, we've got a lot of warm weather ahead. So there's a good chance we may be putting them down there a lot earlier. Just a good weather app on your phone. Most phones come with one, but I don't really have one to recommend. Just, just have one that you like to use and that's easy for you to interpret the information that it provides. Another app I do like is PlantNet. This is an app you can use basically to take pictures of plants and it'll tell you what they are. So this works great when you're trying to identify stuff in your pasture, or if you're just, you know, looking around your property and you see something you don't really know what it is. It's not 100% accurate, but it's pretty darn accurate. So just another app that you can put on your phone that has helped me on our farm, at least with pasture management. Now, one of my favorite apps and technically website is Google Drive. If you are familiar with Google, they have, it's called Google Drive. And it's basically a place where you can create documents, spreadsheets, PowerPoint presentations, just notes and the cool thing is then you can share these notes with if you have a farm team uh, me and my wife we're the farm team here so we share you know lists and notes and different things between each other and it makes it to where say i create a document you know i'll go into long bottom farm here we have our master spreadsheet and uh, i'll put a link below i actually did a video about inventory management and i've given a basic template for this spreadsheet it's free basically uh, just go to the google site copy it and then you can edit it and do whatever you want so uh, that link will be down below but this is our pricing spreadsheet as we change prices she's got the same spreadsheet through her google account and it'll update all the prices um, I could share our inventory. This is how we keep track of our inventory. The green means what we have listed on the website and then everything that's in white, basically not listed on the website. And then comes farmer's market season. We also have a separate stash of product and that'll all be marked yellow. So that way I know what I have on the website, what I have in the farmer's market freezer that goes to market, and then what I don't have listed that I could add to either of those buckets. So again, there's a link to this spreadsheet down below. Check it out and hope you find it helpful. So getting back to Google Drive, this is but one feature. You know, this is a spreadsheet we created, but if you go to, you have a new section, you can create a Google document that's just like a Word document. You can create, like I say, spreadsheets like I just showed you. And there's just so much you can do with this. And again, it's free. It doesn't cost you anything. Definitely something I recommend you at least check out, again, just for trying to keep things organized and to help you on your farm or homestead. The other part, uh, I don't know if it's necessarily in Google Drive, but is uh, Google Keep. This is basically a note list. As you can see here, I've got a to-do list that I've made, you know, clean pole barn, clean chicken house, fix fence. I can create another list and we'll call this groceries. <laughs> Um, but then I can go on here and list milk, toothpaste, and that would be our grocery list. 
but then I can also collaborate or this little button right here, share, and then I can put my wife's email, uh, her Google, uh, she has a Google Gmail account. Basically, if you have a Gmail account, you have an account for all this. And I can put in her email and then it will share this list with her. And in doing so, she can add things to the list. I can add things to the list. And it's pretty simultaneous that it'll update. And so we each keep an updated thing. And then you can, you know, we get these things, we check them off, delete them off your list. So, and this is great. You can make lists for anything. You know, I use it for around the farm. If I just think of something that, you know, I don't want to forget, like, ooh, there's a pothole here. I need to fix that. But I can't do it right now. I'm doing something else. Then maybe to my to-do list, I'll add fix pothole. And that's a simple way to do it. And again, it's free. You can share it amongst your team, your family, and just a great resource. Again, a free resource that can help you on your farm or homestead. Now that we've talked about tools and technology, let's talk about government and nonprofit grants. I know a lot of people get touchy when you mention the word government and using it. I'm going to give you my view on it. This is just my opinion. People feel strongly one way or the other, and I mean not to offend anybody, but this is my take on using like the USDA and some of these gov government resources is that I pay a lot of taxes. Our family pays a lot of taxes. Some of those taxes we don't use, like we homeschool our children, so I, I don't use the school system here. You know, we do need roads, we need military, we need police, so some taxes should be paid, but I also feel that sometimes they're either excessive or tax money goes to things that I don't necessarily agree with or that I don't think is beneficial to the community or, or anyone else. So my way of looking at some of these government things, and this is grants, this is things to help you on your farm, is that you pay taxes into this, you should get something out of it. I pay taxes into it, so I have no problem with taking a grant because then I'm getting some return on my tax money, I'm getting something back. Again, police, fire, teachers, you need these things. And I'm not saying that those are bad, but you know, there's a lot of, a lot of waste that happens as well. And that's your money. It's my money being wasted. And I just feel that taking advantage of some of these programs, whether I agree with it, at least I'm getting some benefit for the taxes that I'm paying. That's just my opinion. Everybody's entitled to their own. And, but I hate for people to hurt themselves or miss out on things that could really help them get ahead by having an ideology that, that basically hurts them. So that's just my view on these grants and taxes. So with that out of the way, let's move on to some of the U to the USDA and some of the services that they provide. So for US farms, the USDA, the United States Department of Agriculture, basically offers assistance to farmers. This is commercial farmers, small farmers, everything in between. They offer loans, they offer grants, they offer technical information, there's insurance products, there's a ton of stuff. But I'm going to point you to a couple of the things that I find beneficial from them. One is they have farm loans. If you're looking to get a loan, these are some of the lowest interest rate loans you will get. The only downside is that there's a lot of hoops to jump through to get it a lot of times. And, you know, like any government agency, that's, I think, the norm. But if you can get through those hoops, you can get less than 1% interest rates. I mean, it's really amazing. And if you know anything about interest rates, you know, if you're funding 10, 20, 30, 40, $50,000, interest makes a big deal in how much you pay back. And a lot of these loans can leave a lot of money in your pocket. Another section they have is uh, beginning farmers and ranchers. And they have a lot of operating loans in here, micro loans. But not only that, there's also grants you can get. I know some that we've looked at is they have some, if you want to go organic certification, they have some grants to help with that. I feel like here in Virginia, if you want a greenhouse, they will cover up to $10,000 of that greenhouse. And it's pretty easy to get. So if you're doing vegetables, that's another thing to look at. There's just a ton of resources, you know, with, with a ton of grants and a ways that they can financially help you on your farm or homestead. Another way that they're very helpful is that they just have knowledgeable people people in, in within the department that if you have questions, you know, say soil health or what should I plant in this pasture? This is where I live. They have people there that can help you with that, give you advice and help you to not make a bad decision. If you've ever had to oversee a pasture or plant, it ain't cheap. And the USDA can provide you a lot of resources that can help with that. Specifically within the USDA is NRCS or the National Resource Conservation Services. They're very helpful at least a lot in what we do. They're more on, you know, if you call it the green side of doing things. They have grants. They offer assistance with doing healthy pastures, minimizing pesticide use. They have a lot of resources and knowledge that can really help you. And within the USDA, that's where I've always turned to when I have questions or I need help with something. So the NRCS, definitely check them out within the USDA. Another service, if you're in the United States, is your local extension offices. Local extension offices are basically extensions of 
colleges within your state. Our extension works through Virginia Tech and they have been a plethora of information for our farm. When we first moved here, our farm was cropland and we needed to convert that to pasture. So we went to them and they actually had some grants to help convert it. We went with another organization, which I'll get to next, that helped us do that. But they still came out. They did a pasture walk with us, recommended you know what we should plant based on what was in there. They kind of pointed out some things that you don't want in there for livestock and just a great resource. Again, this is free. I mean, it's taxpayer funded, but it's free. You go to your extension office and they're, they're typically help you in any way they can. That's what they're there for is to assist farmers and just the community and doing a lot of just agricultural based stuff. So definitely check in your community, what your local extension office is and what they have to offer. They've been a big help to us. Shout out to Jennifer in Buckingham. And we have really appreciated the help they've given us in our journey. They also do grants. They help with funding for certain things. So again, Check out in your local community and, and see what's available to help you on your farm or homestead. Uh, the last thing I want to talk about, and this is something we have in Virginia. I don't know if it's everywhere, but we have a, it's called soil and water conservation. They're a separate branch that are pretty much locally funded and state funded, but they help pretty much with all issues water related. Um, their goal is to protect the waterways. They have been super helpful to us. Uh, we were able to get a grant that allowed us to rent a seed drill from them. They actually have a seed drill that they will rent you. I think it's very reasonable. I want to say it was was eleven dollars an acre maybe and you know if you've looked at a good seed drill I mean you're talking twenty thirty thousand dollars so to rent this to bring it home keep it for a number of days and then you know totally overseed our pastures was super helpful uh, they helped us coming up with the mix. They also helped us with a water and fencing grant. We're on the James River so we had some areas that in their eyes needed to be fenced out. Obviously you don't want cattle in the river and stuff like that. So they paid a certain percentage uh, to have a to help us get fencing put in and also to have a well put in with underground waters that run all over the property. We could not probably have done that starting a farm initially. And we didn't actually for the first year and a half, we were hauling water through IBC totes on wagons and, and a number of things to get water to our animals. So this was a big game changer for our farm. It cut down on labor. These are frost free waters. The fencing we went with high tensile and just a great resource. Ours was the Peter Francisco Soil and Water Conservation. Uh, shout out to Kelly for all the help she gave us. So just something to check within your community uh, you could probably check with your local extension office and they'll because they tend to work very closely together and they could probably help you. So just another resource to check again, free, take advantage of these. All right, we're going to wrap this up with one final category that sounds kind of cheesy, but has really helped us on our farm. And I find that it's a resource I can make use of while I'm farming. And that resource is podcast. We talked about YouTube, which is very similar, but I found with podcast, this is something that if I'm on the tractor mowing a field or overseeding, haying, I can put earbuds in and just listen to that and actually be gaining a lot of knowledge while I'm getting work done. Uh, when we're washing eggs, um, just doing chores. If I'm by myself, I'll put in, pop on a good podcast. It's just been a great source of information for our farm. And you can find podcasts on any topic that you like. And I would also lump in audible books, but again, that costs money. So that's why I've left that out. These podcasts are free. I'll go ahead and mention some of the podcasts that I've found helpful in our farming journey. One is Grass-Fed Life. This is with Darby Simpson and Diego Footer. Um, has been a huge help. Um, Again, I don't think they've done anything recently with this, probably for the last two or three years, but if you just go back into the, the backlog, the archive of what they have, so much information in here, good information. We learned a ton from them. They also have some courses that they offer, one of which we took and actually found it very good. But the podcasts are free. There's a ton of information in there, so definitely something to check out. If uh, This is more for livestock, pasture-raised livestock. If you're into that, check it out. They're a great resource. Another podcast was Farm Small, Farm Smart with Diego Footer. Him and Darby did The Grass-Fed Life, but Diego does Farm Small, Farm Smart. And this is uh, based more on the veg side. So market gardens, growing vegetables, fruits, different things for profit, how to market that stuff. Uh, he does a lot of interviews with other farms that talk about their experiences. And really a great channel, you know, if you're into microgreens or really just any kind of vegetable farming, you'll find something in here that's helpful. Again, this isn't being produced because he's doing another podcast now, which we'll get to, but the archive of what is there is a treasure trove of information. So if you're into veg, check it out. Carrot Cash Flow. This is the other podcast I was just talking about. This is done again by Diego Footer and it basically interviews farms. This has uh, some on the meat side and some on the veg side. So if you're growing for 
food, if you're growing for a farm, if you're just growing for yourself, it's a lot of great information in here. Interviews with farms, a lot about marketing this stuff if you're going to try to sell it and uh, just a great channel and highly recommend it. Uh, next would be The Beginning Farmer with Ethan Book. This is a great podcast, one of the very first ones I listened to, and I don't think there's any recent podcast episodes, but there's still a ton there. And it's essentially Ethan's experience in learning to farm. I learned a lot from it because he talks about a lot of the things he tried didn't work, things that did work. And not only did I go for it looking for answers, but I also would get answers to things I didn't know I needed to know. So it was a great podcast. And just really exposing me to a lot of new farming things. He does pasture-based, again, pasture-based livestock farming. So uh, if you're doing that on your homestead or you're actually raising animals, you know, as a business model, it's a lot about raising animals and I think you'd get a lot out of it. He also has a YouTube channel, which I didn't mention the other one I should have, but uh, the Beginning Farmer YouTube channel. He is still keeping that up to date, so definitely check that out as well. Now, there's a couple other podcasts I'll mention real quick. One is Small Farm Nation with Tim Young. Again, he hasn't put out anything in a while, but he really focuses on marketing of farm products. So how to set up your website, how to do things. He actually has a business, Small Farm Nation. That's who we got our website through and very good service. Again, this is a paid service, but the podcast and his YouTube stuff is free. So again, Tim Young with Small Farm Nation, definitely check that out if you're interested in how to market uh, some of the products that you raise on your farm or homestead. Food Chain Wars with Seven Sons Farm. They're a farm in Indiana that ships frozen meat and eggs. They're a multiple, I believe, seven figure, very big. Not big, I mean, they're a small farm, but for a small farm, they're big. And they do a podcast from anything about soil health to commercial versus pasture-based farming and just everything in between. Uh, they talk about their experiences and it's a great podcast. They haven't put out one in a while, but the stuff that's there is really valuable. You know, it's almost like a course in marketing and, and farming livestock. So highly recommend you check that out. So that's it guys. That wraps it up for our free resources. Um, I hope you use some of these. I hope you get some value out of them. Got links to all of these resources below with the website. So if you miss something, just look down below. And if you have questions, please comment below. I've left, I'm sure, a ton of things off of here. So if you have some resources that you've used that you found that have helped you, please leave them in the comments. I'm always looking for ways that we can still improve our farm, our life, uh, just everything. So share what you have. Uh, we definitely love to hear it. You know, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Our next video, we're going to actually talk about some paid resources. So going on to the other side. But what I mean by paid are some resources that I think will pay you back in dividends by considering these resources. So check that out. That should be out in a week or so. And other than that, if you have questions, let us know. We'll catch you in the next one. All right. Bye.